The movie is set in late 1945 Poland. It is the time after the Nazis had just surrendered the Soviet Union ruled Poland. A Polish nun known as Sister Teresa quietly sneaks out of her convent after dusk to look for a non-Polish and non-Russian doctor while avoiding the attention of Soviet troops patrolling the streets. She bribes a group of orphan street children, who then take her to a young female French student doctor named Mathilde Beaulieu, working for the French Red Cross. However, Mathilde refers Teresa to the Polish Red Cross. For some reason, Teresa isn't keen on seeking the help of the Polish Red Cross and eventually convinces Mathilde to help her. Teresa then takes the doctor to her convent and sneaks her inside. It turns out that a woman in the convent is pregnant with a child and in extreme pain. The convent's mother superior tells Mathilde that the pregnant woman was thrown out by her family and was taken in out of charity. Sister Maria, who knows French, guides Mathilde who determines that the woman's baby is breech and must be brought into the world through an operation. Crying in pain, the woman insists on calling a priest to help her, but the sisters gag her with tape and bring the baby into the world through an emergency C-section. Afterwards, Marie escorts the doctor out of the convent, and Mathilde informs his sister that she will be back with penicillin. Marie initially insists on using the convent's herbalist, saying that the doctor can't be seen going in and out of the convent. However, Mathilde eventually convinces Maria to let her come back. Due to the operation, Mathilde arrives late for her shift, and her senior doctor instantly guesses that she was up all night. Mathilde makes the excuse that she had insomnia, and Samuel gives her a day off. Meanwhile, Sister Teresa gets in trouble with Mother Superior for bringing a doctor into the convent without her permission. It is revealed that one other pregnant woman miscarried in the convent after failing to get medical attention. As punishment, Mother Superior grounds her for a week. That evening, Maria sneaks Mathilde into the convent to give the new mother a penicillin injection. Mathilde then asks to see the baby, but Maria tells her that the baby has already been adopted by a family. On the way out, Mathilde encounters another pregnant nun named Anna passing out, and Mathilde is forced to reveal herself to help Anna. The commotion attracts the attention of Mother Superior, and she calls Mathilde to her office. Mother Superior finally explains that the pregnant nuns were assaulted by the Nazis and Soviet troops. It turns out that there are six other pregnant nuns in the convent, and they are afraid of seeking medical help because they don't want to break their vow of chastity. However, Mathilde can't seem to comprehend why the nuns are so adamant about not accepting any medical help, because she was raised by atheist communist parents. She offers to contact the Polish Red Cross, but the Mother Superior turns down the offer as she fears that the news of the pregnant nuns will result in the convent getting shut down. After a lot of back and forth, Mother Superior finally agrees to let Mathilde help the pregnant nuns, but only on the condition that she would keep it a secret from her colleagues. That evening, Mathilde goes out for drinks with Samuel. It is revealed that Samuel is from an upper-class French-Jewish family, and his parents perished in the Bergen-Belsen Nazi concentration camp. Samuel was an only son and managed to survive because he left for London in 1940. Samuel says he will never set foot in France. He then changes the topic and asks Mathilde for a dance. After dancing and drinking their hearts out, the two return to Mathilde's apartment to have intercourse. After the fun, they get to talking, and Mathilde wonders out loud how the communist regime would treat the Polish church. Mathilde's interest in the Polish church's fate surprises Samuel, and he wishes nothing but the worst for the Polish church and Poles for what they did to the Polish Jewry. It is revealed that the convent lost its father several months ago, and the diocese hasn't been able to find anyone to replace him. Consequently, Mother Superior has postponed the vows ceremony twice already, so she can't afford to push it any further and has decided to hold it two months from now. Mother Superior also instructs the sisters to allow Matilde to help them. Some of the nuns cooperate, but some of them are reluctant to be examined intimately by the doctor, believing this will violate their vow of chastity. One of the nuns confesses to Mother Superior that her faith has been deeply shaken by these events. Mother Superior tells her to be strong and prays with her. One day, while returning home from the convent, Mathilde's van is stopped by a group of drunk Russian soldiers. They drag her out of the van and attempt to force themselves on her until the troop's commander intervenes and sends Mathilde back towards the convent. A disheveled and traumatized Mathilde decides to seek refuge in the convent. Shaken by the ordeal, she cries herself to sleep. The next day, Russian soldiers storm into the convent, believing the nuns are harboring an enemy soldier. However, Mathilde convinces them that she is there to deal with an emergency outbreak of typhus. The Mother Superior is badly shaken by the threat of soldiers and thanks the doctor for her presence of mind. While talking to her, Mathilde realizes that she too was raped. After Mother Superior leaves, Sister Maria tells the doctor that every day she is reminded of the harsh events of the past. She further adds how faith has become more difficult for her. After being saved by Mathilde, other nuns' opinions of her also changes and they come to appreciate her more. When Mathilde returns to her headquarters, her boss chastises her for having been away without leave. He says that the military is a place of order and discipline. 
Samuel also grows worried of her truancy and starts suspecting that she is secretly attending Communist Party meetings. That night to eschew attention, Mathilde rides a bike to the convent, where another novice nun named Ludwika gives birth unexpectedly. This nun had not realized she was pregnant and does not seem to know she has given birth. The mother superior has given orders that she be notified of all births, but Mathilde requests that she not be notified immediately as she wants to focus on care for the newborn. For the time being, Maria gives a different nun, Sister Sophia, the responsibility of the child. While getting dressed to leave, Mathilde asks Maria if she ever regrets her life as a nun, and the novice replies, Faith is 24 hours of doubt with one minute of hope. When Mathilde returns to her army medical unit, she learns that half of her unit is going to be transferred to Berlin, while the other half is back to France at the end of the month. Samuel is upset that he will have to part ways with Mathilde, who he knows will return to France. Seeing Mathilde even more upset, Samuel asks what's bothering her, but she refuses to open up. At the convent, several nuns are about to give birth, and Maria immediately telephones Mathilde. The latter finally comes clean to Samuel and asks him to come along with her to the convent. Mathilde assures the nuns that he will keep their secret. After examining the pregnant nuns, Mathilde visits the baby who has been named Helena and whose existence has been kept secret from Mother Superior. Maria plans to take baby Helena to Zofia's family, but the baby is discovered by Mother Superior. Upset that she was lied to, Abbas tells Maria that she has been corrupted by that French woman who has brought scandal and disorder to the convent. However, Maria replies, forgive me, but scandal and disorder were already here. Sophia, who had grown close to the baby, notices Mother Superior taking the baby outside the convent to put her up for adoption and breaks into tears. It is revealed that Mother Superior, who has been telling everyone that she takes the babies to families who have agreed to adopt, actually abandons the babies in front of a crucifix on a country walking path after baptizing it. The Mother Superior later privately prays that she has the courage to continue on the path she has chosen as Samuel and Mathilde deliver the babies. Meanwhile, a distraught Sophia commits suicide by jumping from an upper ledge, dying shortly after her wounded body is discovered. Matilde is shaken by the incident, and she returns to her base with Samuel, who comforts her. After Sister Sophia is laid to rest, Maria goes to Sophia's family to report her death. She tells them about her death, but also learns that Sophia's aunt never knew Sophia as a child, nor that she had been caring for another baby. However, Maria decides not to tell the aunt the truth. This is Maria's first realization that Mother Superior has been dishonest about the fate of the babies. After returning to the convent, she confronts Mother Superior, demanding the truth. Mother Superior says she entrusted the child to God, and when Maria expresses her disappointment, Mother Superior asks Maria, Don't you believe in providence? Later, three more nuns go into labor and give birth to babies. Meanwhile, Mathilde and her medical unit prepare to leave for their new destination. Sister Maria brings the babies to the base to protect them from Mother Superior. At the base, one of the nuns decides to leave the convent and raise her own child. She thanks Maria for her help and parts ways with her. Meanwhile, the orphan children are also upset that Matilde is leaving with her base as they have been helping personnel at the base from time to time in exchange for money and food. Suddenly, it occurs to Matilde that the nuns could start raising many of these children and open an orphanage, thus avoiding questions about where the babies are coming from. Maria and Matilde return to the convent with the babies and the orphan children. They present the idea to the mother and the nuns. Mother Superior is unable to reject the idea because of her own deceit, and she is forced to give her permission. Afterwards, Mathilde returns home, giving a lift to one of the nuns who also decided to leave the convent, but allow her baby to be raised by the nuns. Two months pass by, and the convent becomes cheerful and lively because of the children. The day of the vow ceremony has finally arrived, and the movie ends with the photographer at the convent taking pictures of the nuns and happy orphans.